Welcome to Six Picks Music Club, a music podcast for people who wear shirts when they swim. Well, hey, hey, oh, God, my voice, uh, what hey, happened hey. there? Uh, got that. Hey, hey. Did you just smoke a pack of cools <laughs> right before that? <laughs> but uh, welcome back to Six Picks Music Club, the music podcast where we make a playlist of six songs around each episode's theme. Thanks, listener, for making Six Picks your first listen every other Wednesday, where the best way to help us grow the show is for you to like and listen on our... It's to like and listen on... God. To like and listen to your... Oh, fucking hell. Dude, I know exactly what happened there. Dave was, like, really crushing that. And then he was, like, in the middle of it, he goes, man, I'm crushing this. And then you <laughs> fucked it up. <laughs> like, you you were like, God, this is going so well. Like, I can hear you. Okay, well, welcome back to Six Picks Music Club. We're the music podcast, and we make a playlist of six songs around each episode's theme. <laughs> <laughs> no? What did I nope. do? And, um, <laughs> uh, hey, wait a second, guys. Um, All right. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm Harry Carey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host Dave, and with me are my fellow music lovers, the fearless Jeffro and Rick Roll Russ. Hey guys, how we be? Well, we've been talking already for 25 minutes that the listener hasn't heard, and we're I think we're doing great together. Yeah. What do you, Russ? How's your day? It's okay, man. Not bad. A lot of doing summer stuff, you know. That sounds suspicious. What do you? What? It, it's like very nondescript answer. Mr. Vagueness over here. Yeah, getting extra license plates so that when you murder people, you can easily <laughs> switch a license plate and get away in the same car. Is that the oh, summer yeah. thing you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, <clears throat> else to the yeah, boys. You, let's get the party started. Fro, uh, tell listener what the password is to get into the clubhouse today. Beach, please. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Excellent. Okay, grab a floaty, grab a pop. Let's get on in here. All right, listener, on today's up, we're going to get wet and hopefully not too sunburn as we take our playlist to the beach. We've each picked a couple of songs we like for different parts of the day at the beach. And, uh, you know, we're not the only people that have ever gone to the beach. So, as no surprise, Dr. Fro has created a little bit of a beach trip uh, typology. So you want to give us a give us a start with that, Jeffro? I was thinking about beach songs and and then I realized that like beach experiences are quite diverse. Obviously, it's 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 pinned on two things. It's pinned on location of beach and who you're with. Right. And so you're going to have different kinds of beach. And so so I just came up with like a because I was trying to think what what kind of beach trip are my songs going to be? So I will have an answer to that. Uh, I, ch- I had to choose one of these because you can't have them all, but they, uh, they're this. Here's, here's my list of different kinds of beach. You want to hear them? Yeah. 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 What do you got? Okay. You got, first off, you got chill beach, which is okay. where you go. It's beautiful. You sit on towels you get some sun, it's calming, and you, re- you read a book. Chill beach, yeah. right? Chilled out. Got it. Got it. Okay. Number two is surf beach. Which Real quick. So <laughs> to go back to your beach, please, um, you should definitely do chill beach in that voice. Chill beach? <laughs> 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 chill beach <laughs> fucking beach everything's cool beach a <laughs> couple of fonzies yeah you're right about that uh so yeah chill beach reading a book you got your sunglasses on you're sitting in a chair that you brought you're having hard water um okay so that's one of them another one is surf beach which is like dick dale's plan wow and then you're it's frisbee <laughs> It's you got a dog and you're throwing the ball to the dog. You know, you're like everybody's in short shorts and you're doing water sports. That's surfing beach. Surfing beach. Okay. 
and which could could also be called sports beach, but I like to call it surfing okay. beach because it's like you think sixties, you think whoa. <laughs> Next one, okay, it's starting to get this this one is called Drug Beach. And this one could be anywhere, but this is when you decide that you're gonna I did this in Port Aransas, Texas, when the beach was like kind of empty at the end of the summer. But it's like you do mushrooms on the beach okay. and you feel so you this feel is gonna the, go back to Dave saying beach you trippin'. <laughs> 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 Why are you tripping, Beach? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Yeah. So mushies uh getting Yeah, let's call getting... Drugs Beach. Let's call Drugs Beach. I'm tripping beach. Or I'm tripping beach. Stop tripping beach. Yeah, stop tripping beach. Yeah, but that that's one where you've decided you're trying to kind of do sports beach, but you've taken some mushrooms or smoked too much weed. Or, you know, you've really put yourself over the edge and now you're kind of in the grip and you're looking out like there's a lot mm. of sun. There's a lot of expanse there. It's <laughs> it's a uh, it can it can turn on you, you know? Yeah. Hard to handle yeah. sunscreen when you're all mushied up. <laughs> Then it it can kind of go into or it can be preceded by the next one, which I would call Budweiser Beach. Uh, okay. which is also cigarette <laughs> beach, which is also <laughs> Florabama beach. <laughs> yes. Um, and th this one is like, there's beach in the American South. And yeah, so they're going to be shit kickers that go out there and treat the beach. Like they treat, you know, going out and mudding with their buddies. And that's Budweiser beach. You all have bandanas on. There's definitely a heavy contingent of cut off jean shorts. Um, okay. you, you're of course drinking Budweiser. That's you've also brought out your beer pong and your cornhole. You know you're set. You're okay. setting up what's basically your cookout that happens outside of your house on the beach. And got it. You know you got your food. You got your grill. You know it's a it's like the Fourth of July. You might have brought fireworks. Mm -hmm. That's Budweiser Beach. You guys know that. You've been it. you've been to yeah. Budweiser Beach. Fun. I'm not even. I'm not saying. Oh, those are a bunch of hicks. Like I fucking crush Budweiser Beach. I love a good Budweiser Beach. But you're definitely gonna find it in Galveston or in, you know. Orange <laughs> Beach, Alabama. Uh, you know, it's it's on the southern Destin coast. Destin would like a word. Yeah, Destin might get in there. Maybe Charleston, South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. I don't. I've not been there, hmm. but I imagine that that's the way they they rock it there. Um. Anyway. Okay. So that's Budweiser Beach. Then you got. Uh, I should have done these in a different order because I think Budweiser Beach could lead to Drug Beach, which then leads to another one that I call Existential Beach. Hmm. Uh, which is where you look out onto the ocean and you feel dread. Have you ever been, have you ever felt the, the dread of the, the, yeah, the vastness of the ocean? Have you ever, or am I the only one? No, I, I, I typically when I'm at the beach, I'm, I'm having a pretty good time. I guess that's part of the thing for me is that like my beach trips were, are far and few between. And so when I go, it's pretty intentional that like we're there to enjoy. So like I, I can imagine you said it like far and few, but I've never heard somebody say it <laughs> in that order. It's few I know. and far between. <laughs> okay, <laughs> never far and few between. I, I don't even know how to talk anymore. Like, yeah, it's it's all the all the the beach typology is really fucking wrecking your brain. I can see that. Russ is he's aggressively <laughs> yawning in my direction. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, right on, man. I feel a little bit smarter about how other people beach now. So let's get into it. Now, listener, when I was thinking about the order for our tracks today, I was thinking about how these tracks might fit into a day at the beach. So. Like our playlist clocks in at under 30 minutes. Uh, so like when you're pulling ours into your playlist, this is just a good idea, a good general idea on how to incorporate. You could also think about these like it's a six pack of pops and we're going to go from beer one to number six. Wait, pops? Pops? Yeah. Barley pops. 
couple pops. You don't say that. You don't say that. Sure you do. It sounds like you're from the Northeast and you're talking about soda. Yeah, I would never call soda. I, did say, I thought you were talking about soda. No, so confused. No, barley pops. Oh, it's it. It's not crazy that you would be talking about soda, and we should have expected you that you were saying barley pop instead. <laughs> like you're from 1952. I mean, I'm I'm in my 40s. Yeah, I'm not talking about soda at the beach. What are we doing? Dude, are you kidding me? Russ and I had the same reaction to this. You're gaslighting us right now. You're the weird one. Okay, <laughs> a six pack of pops. You think I'm getting a, like a like a a turtle killer, you know, plastic. I don't think that, six that doesn't mean beers. Will you just say beer just in case? <laughs> okay. Unbelievable. Oh no, fucking a! Like that is a real thing. People say pops for beer, but you could also think about this as a six pack of beers, and we're going from number one to number six, and not saying that we recommend drinking six beers in thirty minutes, unless you're at an ultimate frisbee tournament. Then that's probably that's probably okay. But uh, all right, Russ, we've uh, we've pulled up, we've parked the golf cart, we're unpacking everything, and we are setting up for the day. What do we listen to as we make that trek from the cart to what will be our spot for the day as we crack that first one? Okay, first beer. So we're going to be listening to Mr. Blue Sky by Electric Light Orchestra from the 1977 album Out of the Blue. Dude, I... I'm such a big ELO fan. Started early in life. No, they're great. Russ, I was so glad to see you pick this one because this one was almost on my list. I was like, I love how how it starts. You're in it. You're like, you're starting this great thing. It's such an adventure fun song. Yeah. So the story for the song goes that Jeff Lynn was working on a follow-up to a New World Record and the weather was misty and dark and cloudy, just like just generally shitty. He sits for two weeks, comes up with absolutely nothing. Then finally, the sun breaks through the clouds and then and the sky clears up and he's got this like perfect view of the Alps. And then he just writes this song and then finishes the album in two weeks, just like writing the, the album in two weeks. <laughs> so but uh, this is where like the name and where the song came and kind of what inspired the rest of the album. You know, and it makes me think like he maybe they should have called the band Natural Light Orchestra because apparently he needs sunlight to operate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. that's pretty good. Okay, so this to me is a great first beer song. You know, yeah. you hit play, you crack open your aluminum bottle, you take a seat in your fold up chair, you smell the ocean breeze, you feel the salt on your skin and enjoy thinking about how this is all you have to do for the rest of the day. In fact, I'm actually grateful, Dave, that uh, you gave me the first beer spot because I happen to love the first beer more than the rest. I think there's this unlimited possibility that goes with it. Just like yeah. those first couple of sips when I'm on the beach is where like my energy level is just starting to peak and, and, you know, I'm up, but I'm also very serene. Like I'm excited where I'm going and, and what's in store, but I'm also just taking it all in. It's like my most quiet period of the day as well. I don't know. There's just something okay. special about it. Yeah. 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 And I don't know if it's like this for you guys, but I tend to feel like the buzz more during the day, especially at the beach. So I almost feel like after first couple of sips, and it's probably just psychosomatic. I can start to feel it going through. And maybe it's just my own excitement of what's happening or my internal elation. So I, I really enjoy just like the first beer and the beginning of the first beer, especially just because it's where I'm going. When you're like hot and you're sweating, like and you're that hot where there's no there's no way of really blocking the sun from affecting you at all. Drink a beer. Cold beer is the best. Like that, it yeah, just feels just, great. You don't feel like weighed down by it. You just are like, I'm out in the sun and sweating and drinking beers and feeling buzz. That's the best, dude. Yeah. So like whenever we go to the beach, it's like I have that sort of stress anxiety of like I'm the one putting together all of the stuff. Like I'm getting the cooler set up. I'm putting up the little tent thing. I'm doing all this stuff. And and all the kids are just like, I, let's go. And then they're just in the water, like, fuck my life jacket. I'm, I'll die for this. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. wait, everybody just just chill for a second. Just calm like, down. 
Yeah. <laughs> this is summer <laughs> rental get... beach. This is summer rental beach with John Candy. Did you ever watch that movie? <laughs> he's just carrying he's carrying yeah. like a whole ice chest and like, all I'm the literally stuff. pulling, you know, the wagon full of like the the kites and the sun shields and the tents and the the lunch and everything and then and then I'm setting all the chairs up and getting everything ready to go like screwing in the little sand thing that you poke, poke yeah. your umbrella it is a, into or whatever it's an incredible set you're basically establishing a habitat on in nature yeah, yeah. Like, like you're going to be scratch. there all day yeah you need a little bit of protection from the sun there's a lot of things going on hey dad go make my habitat while i have fun okay <laughs> So when I get to crack that first beer, it means that I've done it. And then it's like, now I can sit down and it's like, take a breath and, uh, and yeah, really, really enjoy the day. So for you, that's a victory beer. And then that is when you Absolutely. go, Absolutely, Mr. Boo Sky. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, that's why I like that this song is so long. It's, it's like, it gives me time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. All right. To circle back to the song real quick. It doesn't hurt that this song is easy. Like it's an, it's an easy song to listen to, especially in the beach setting or scenario. And yeah. To me, it kind of sits in this realm of timeliness, right? I mean, the song came out 47 years ago, but it could have come out last year. 47. Golly. And Jeff Lynn's doing his farewell tour, his final tour right now, yeah? He's still awesome. That weird percussion in the middle of the song is them beating a fire extinguisher with a stick. Isn't that oh, like nice. a plank, 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 plank sound? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so this song paired with the first beer, I don't have a care in the world, you know? Yeah, yeah. Pretty great, dude. No, that's pretty, great. That's a great one. Pretty great. Okay, so we're all set up. Everybody's got sunscreen on. Kids are in the water. It's time to crack that second one. How are we feeling, Jeff? What do you got for us to settle into the day? So this almost made it onto a previous pod for me because this is one of the greatest covers of all time. But it's also for me, like when I'm starting to feel the buzz of the beach and I'm hanging out with my ladies and bros and uh, just feeling that vibe. This is the one I want to come on. It's Poolside's Harvest Moon, Neil Young cover. are always long i get i i get that but this is a beach song and <laughs> they can they can it's it's a groove and it can set a tone you know and yeah uh, yeah there's something about the song it sounds like water this song but it's also right. it's, it's got that man i love that groovy bass and dude i'm gonna tell you guys if you just want to be a big hit on the beach with your friends the guys and the girls will love when you play this song, it is universally beloved on the beach or by the pool. I promise. Yeah. People would be like, who is Which that? Which beach would that be, Jeff? This is Chill Beach. So I chose, I should say, I chose Chill Beach because that's the one that I want to go to most. Yeah, I want to go to Chill Beach the most. Yeah, that's a, it's a great chill song. I think that like, uh, there's like a dreamy quality to it that yeah. just like uh, mm -hmm. makes it feel really cool. And, and, and it's like this take on a song that's a classic already. Right. So it's like, I have a great love for this track, uh, the original, because it's like one that my wife and I danced at at our wedding. It's definitely cool. And to hear it, hear this take on it is equally awesome. If these dudes whose names are Jeffrey Paradise, great name. And Philip Nikolich, and then Nikolic left the band in 2017. This was in 2012. This song came out. But if those dudes sat you down in 2011 and they're like, listen, what we're going to do is we're going to take Neil Young's Harvest Moon and make it a new disco chill wave song. Are you into that? And you'd be like, dude, that is the worst <laughs> idea I've ever heard. But there's something about it to me like. When when I they like pull the it off. very first listen, dude, it's so good. And and it's because you are you do love Harvest Moon. When you love Harvest Moon and you know all the beats of his vocals, the way that they yeah. kind of like mix that into the song, you're just like, oh yeah. But anyway, love it, fucking greatness. And I listen to it every time I go to the beach. It's good. 
That's good. That's awesome. No, I feel like it was one that came through on a lot of, uh, I don't know, social media stuff at the time. Maybe it was on the Sirius uh, radio or whatnot. I, I do remember hearing it back then, but um, it was nice to hear it again. Nice to revisit it. And definitely going to go on future beach playlists for me. That was Dave saying, yeah, I know about it. I just, you know, like, <laughs> it's cool. Like, you didn't introduce me to anything new or anything, so... <sighs> Well, listen, <laughs> I had already had mine, so yeah. yeah. Somebody All like, right, cool, cool, I cool. think their promoter like tweeted it to me back then, and I like <laughs> listened to the first few bars of it. And uh, was like, this, I know where this is going, but it's cool. Yeah, dude, the vibes on that track are immaculate. I love it so much. And we're cruising. We're cruising through the day. We've got our kite up so we can see the camp from the water. Everybody's splashing in the surf, finding little sea creatures in the in the uh, algae and stuff. And we're feeling good. Sucking hairy dicks by the portalette. Wait, sorry. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I went to Florabama. I went to Florabama again. I was on cigarette like, beach. I thought we were, this is chill beach. No, no. We went get to me off a of cigarette beach. <laughs> yeah. Get us off of there. Let's power through the afternoon. What do it you got? It smells like us? cool water cologne here at cigarette beach. Get me out of here. <laughs> so, we're on beer three, right? Beer three is also a favorite of mine. Like we all know about liquid courage, but we don't regularly talk about the added energy you get from alcohol without mixing Red Bull into it. You know, not that you would mix Red Bull into a beer, but just in general, you know, and for me, at least these days, beer three has me feeling a little loose, energized, buzzy, but far from drunk. So my beer three pick is a song called Here It Goes Again by OK Go off their 2005 album, Oh No. So I guess I'm on, uh, what beach is this? Sports Beach? What was that? Which one is that? <laughs> yeah, this is... I'm uh, definitely not on Chill Beach. Surf and Sports Beach. Yeah. Surf and Sports Beach. I mean, it's not 60s, but it's... No, yeah, that's good. I feel like there's a little more activity going on yeah. here where I'm at. It's poppy. What was the video for this? They had like a run of cool YouTube videos. Yeah, it's a treadmill for this the one. The treadmill was this treadmill one. Video. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. You know, they... Uh, so, f- frontman Damien Kulash's sister is the one who choreographed it, and they ended up having to do it 21 times, but only three times were they able to do it in one take. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. And I watched it again. Just I was just like watching to see, and sure enough, it's like it's insane. It's pretty good though. Yeah, they were they were kind of like pioneers of tricked up YouTube videos like that. Yeah, their Rube Goldberg machine one. It's great. Yeah. What happened was, I guess this was their their first song to chart on the Billboard 100, and they they said, okay, we don't want to be one hit wonders, and we don't want to like we don't want to run away from it like as they quoted as saying like Radiohead ran away from creep to go do something else. So I said, you know, fuck it. Let's just embrace it. And like, we'll be known as like the quirky video band, the band who makes like quirky videos, which is like, it worked well. And then they ended up getting another, getting onto the billboard 100 again in 2014 with, uh, I won't let you down. So it's interesting, but that's kind of, that's the route they decided to take. And I think it's cool. It turns out they did let me down though. <laughs> Anyway, so this song, to me, it inspires motion, right? I mean, it could represent the Top Gun volleyball scene or the Top Gun Maverick, like, dogfight football. Like, I could feel like yeah. this song could play during that, uh, you know, you're having fun. If they re-soundtracked the beach football scene. By the way, the beach football they're playing and the new Top Gun is it's got three sides or like three end zones or something. It doesn't make any sense. It's the most confusing game of football. <laughs> like it's triangle football. Well, there's, there's two balls. Yeah. There's two balls and whatever I saw. There was a, re- there's a Reddit post where somebody broke down how the rules would actually work. And they like put it out there. And I guess went through this whole thing where they were talking like, okay, if we were to really make this into a game, how would we do it? And I think they figured out rules for it's it. It's impossible. What about the uh, point break football scene? Oh yeah, that one. That yeah. one. That one's point fine. They're football. playing actual scrap football, which doesn't make sense about point break. Is that he runs twenty yards into the ocean, which is out of bounds, and then <laughs> and then gets and then Johnny into the Utah ocean. smokes him, you know, and you and they're like, get up, yeah, <laughs> or 
or whatever. You want to get nuts? And but it's like <laughs> so far out of bounds. It doesn't make any sense. And it's um, like the thing where they're running for way too long, right? So it's yeah, like they're yeah, going, yeah. and then you cut back and forth. It's like everybody's like a quarter mile away now. Yeah, he ran a hundred and forty-five yards on one run play. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, yeah, now, you were in the Rose Bowl, man. I saw you. <laughs> yeah, because we're just a bunch of surf jerks that are fighting against fascists also really and into watching college football. football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's such a good movie, though. We love. We I it think we probably movie. all love that movie. Could I say? Could I guess yeah. that? Oh, sure. absolutely. Yeah. No, if they remix the tr- Top Gun scene to OK Go, it would make it seem all fun and zany instead of you know because it's got to have like <laughs> let's hear it for the boys. Like it's got to be something that's about like championing masculinity, which OK Go is not uh-huh. doing. Be fucking hilarious. Right. No, I feel like this should be in like a Matthew Vaughn movie where they're killing a bunch of people. It's just like the oh, fun. Oh yeah, that <laughs> like, would be perfect. Be like a Kingsman scene or something. Sure. Yeah, right, right. Anyway, you're on the beach. You're having fun. You're feeling good. You're playing with your friends or family or playing with your kids. It's uh, you know, it's like a pinnacle moment for me. It's like the perfect balance of beer, energy, fun. And, uh, you know, and if you're getting sunburned, like it hasn't happened yet, I don't know, just thinking about it puts a smile on my face and makes me happy. It's like summertime. So congratulations, summer. Here we go. No, it's awesome. Like, it's a fun one for sure. My uh, my oldest likes uh, like the first time we went to the to the beach with her when they were both littler, um, they had never seen it before. And, and so she was like, Dad, let's go wave jumping. I'm like, what the fuck is that? What do you what do you mean? What is she's like? We'll go, we'll jump into the waves. It's like, okay, yeah, cool. And then it's it was fun. like the whole She's thing right. that she talked about. She is right. Yeah. But I just never heard it referred to as that. She came up with this this new term that, you know, much like uh, Fro's like typography. What is it? What are we calling this? Topography? Yeah, For topography. beaches. It's the topography. <laughs> No, she invented her own thing for it. And and then that was all she could talk about. She was like, oh, man, wasn't that so fun? Yesterday when we were we were wave jumping, let's do that again. I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's the most fun part. When you get rough beach and you let the waves crash and you jump over the top of them, fuck yeah, dude. She knows. I think what it is is that she did her research. And you apparently <laughs> don't know shit about the beach. You don't even know how to say that you go to the beach <laughs> few and far between like you get that mixed up you know the beach is so thoroughly flummoxing for you that and she's the one that's like she's got her ipad up and she goes oh people do wave jumping i'm gonna propose that to dad and you're like what is that i'm busy trying to screw the umbrella into the duh. yeah yeah that is me that is me to be fair she didn't have ipads back then Whatever. And like, I didn't get to do a lot of beach growing up. Like we didn't. I think yeah, we went one time down to Galveston, and like my brother got stung by a stingray, and then it was just like a horrible thing. And and then we oh, never Jesus. went back. Yeah, yeah and so said, you guys like, were just at Chuck E. Cheese no. trying to watch MTV and fucking getting dressed <laughs> up for Halloween on airplanes <laughs> and with cancer wigs. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's what we did, and it, maybe it was a jellyfish. I think it, not a stingray, but yeah, jellyfish uh, was, attack. Okay. Yeah, dude, and, see, and... Russ again. No, the jellyfish stingray distinction is foreign to Dave. <laughs> These things, for those of us who have been to the beach, doesn't scores of times. These things are all built in, baby. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm late to the game on it, and I'm fine with that because I do really enjoy it. I and, think my brother uh, got you know. stung by a Portuguese man of war, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that it was tough, guys. <laughs> oh man, when I was a kid, I saw somebody get stung on by one of those uh, by the man of wars. Did you see somebody get stung by one of those? I saw them react after they got stung by one. I guess it had washed up on shore, and and they stepped oh. on it. Oh wow! I was I was fr- I remember like I didn't want to go to the beach for a Were year. Were they convulsing? Because, 
it was another kid. It was like a different kid. They weren't convulsing, but like I, the amount of screaming and like, I don't know, like I, it was so much chaos. I was young, so I don't remember a lot, but it was, yeah, just... it's supposed to be excruciating. And oh. if you swim into one with your face, it can kill you because it will send your body, it yeah. can send your body into shock. Like they, they yeah. get you real good. We went, we were going to that same yeah. orange beach one time and there was a purple flag flying I was like, purple, not red. And so I was like getting on my, and they're like, dude, no, no, no. Purple's worse than red. Red is drowning. Purple is, they, well, they called it like hazardous biodiversity or something. And it was like hazardous biodiversity. And so then I looked it up on my phone. It was like, like if you're at Orange Beach this weekend, it's going to be a wash with Portuguese man of war. And so I was like, what's that? And I was looking at my, and I was like, oh boy. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> fuck that shit. And so that's the only time. Like, if usually Pass. if it's a if it's red flag just for like a rip tide, I still go in that son of a bitch. But the the purple, no way. I don't want to get eaten by je- uh, like an enormous jellyfish. Speaking about flags and beaches, the uh, we were in Saint Martin for one of the shoots that we were doing years ago and there was this british guy named johnny he was like super pale and he could not get a tan he just got burned so he would he was like red and white and so they would call him johnny dive flag because he was red and white (laughs) that's funny okay so we've had lunch we're reapplying sunscreen maybe a little slightly burnt but we're getting into the shade if we can for a moment and we're still having a ton of fun cracking that fourth beer my first pick is going to keep that positive energy as we press forward and the track is off of Daft Punk's fourth studio record, Random Access Memories, released in 2013. And it also features Noah Lennox, better known by his stage name as Panda Bear. And the track's doing it right. So this is the last song that they recorded for this album. And it's actually, it's also the only purely electronic song on the record. It's got like a drum beat, a uh, modular synth, that vocoder track, and then Panda Bear's vocals. And um, so when we were living in California, it was in 20, 2013. And so that's kind of one of the reference points that I have there uh, was that it was so expensive and we weren't making very much money. We couldn't really do anything. So we stayed home a lot and uh, listened to records. And so this is one that was on heavy rotation. You know, the rent is too damn high out there. You can't, you can't go and do anything. We were both working full-time jobs and on alternating schedules. So anytime that we did have a free moment, it was just sort of like, okay, cool. Let's hang out on the patio. Let's go have a couple of drinks or, or put on a record kind of thing. And, uh, and also during this time, uh, when this record, we weren't having drinks at this particular point because, uh, we were, uh, my wife was pregnant for the first time and, and we were pretty, hardcore about that but uh, i think this is my favorite track on the record and um you know i was already into animal collective at that point and so there's another panda bear record that's that's a solo record that's really good and uh so yeah there's some nostalgia for me with this it's kind of like being pregnant uh and like just hanging out dancing in the living room with my lady and um really getting down to this daft punk record now like how it applies to the beach you know like there is California Beach, and we're going to hear a little bit about that, I think, uh, in the next track. But most of my like real beach memories are down on the Texas coast, down at Port A or Padre or, or any of those things where it's like, you know, maybe not the crystal clear water all the time, but it's actually water that's warm enough to swim in. You don't just like turn into a popsicle when you jump in the Pacific Ocean like you do. So... Uh, I think it's nicer. I have a preference to it. At this particular day, we're cracking fourth beer and um, yeah, we're just chilling. It's like the afternoon. Everyone's having a great time. You know, we've uh, we've done so much fun stuff. And this is just like where you sit and you reflect a little bit and say, man, this is this is really a magical moment. You can like ride that groove through and uh, and really. I don't know, have have some. Maybe that's where you get into the reflective beach piece. But you're well, so but, maybe uh, not yet. But you are dancing to this song, I think. You're, but it's like, it is like a groovy dance. But you're still dancing. 
It is taking you in. You're right, though. It's taking you into dusk. Like, this is a dusky dance tune, you know? Yeah. We're not in the glittering sun anymore. Let's take a break and chew the fat. Play that motherfucker. Jeff Rust and Dave in the motherfucking chat. Chewing the fat on stuff weird and whack. I got into this debate with uh, with, with my wife. Um, how do you guys, like, how do you wash your butthole? Like, are you like a washcloth oh. person or like a loofah or just like bar of soap? Like, what's what's the process? Okay, so uh, I I always hit it with the hand first to just dislodge whatever could possibly still be in there if I just blew it at some point. And then I yeah. go with it with a loofah, you know, like because otherwise if I go to the loofah first and I miss something. Holy shit, man. Then I'm like picking out you shit like it's no good. Poop so. particles in your loofah. Yeah, okay. Like, no thanks. Yeah, I I'm the same. I I am a very I'm very thorough on the anus cuz I just I think I think when I was a kid one of my best friends was like we were wrestling and he's like, "Hey man, your butt smells." And it like he was trying to be helpful. Uh-huh. And it really stuck with me forever. <laughs> like that, it's like I actually am. In, I'm humiliated a little to to say that out loud, uh, because it hurts so hard. Like it, it was one of those like birth of a complex things. And so I swear, dude, since that's probably 33 years ago, I was like eight. I have been a voracious scrubber of the butt since then, <laughs> religiously. <laughs> Yeah, well, so like since we've got the uh, the the bidet now, it's like I feel like I can get in there and and pressure wash oh, that yeah. fucker, but still like you know it's that thing where if you like are walking around and you've got an itchy anus, you're like, oh, yeah. I didn't get enough off of there. I got to get back in the shower or something like that. So that is a non-issue for me. I don't get the itch butt because I am so hardcore about getting it all cleaned out. Like I I I basically yeah. use wet wipes. You know, after the the toilet paper, yeah, yeah, no, 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 and, same, yeah, because you, you can't gotta flush make sure. those though. Even though they say they're you flushable, can't, they're, you can't. Yeah, yeah, well, we just like the plumber will tell you. We otherwise. actually are trying to destroy destroy the plumbing under our house because <laughs> there's a voucher that you could get from the province to repair plumbing, and so we're just trying to blow that thing up with wet wipes. Yeah, dope. Get that's those kids true. to start that's flushing true. Does some it, did, toys Russ, down did there. did you kind of believe that for a second? No, no. I was just thinking that when we had plumbing issues at one point, the plumber came and he and he was saying, "Well, if you if you use the wipies, he always called them wipies, and he was wipies. like, if you use the wipies, that could really clog up the plumbing over here. You know, all those and and like some feminine products coagulated and and fat from people's waste and." In the sewer. This is in London. Oh, they called it a fat berg. Fat this berg. is real. <laughs> it was a fat berg that clogged up like underground drainage, and they had to send somebody down there. I guess it's like a, a sewer scuba team, which has got to be oh, one God. of the worst jobs in the entire world <laughs> to have to go into that. Jeez, and please, dude. I just can't no, even thank imagine. You. And so they go in there and they just see that there's this like enormous yellow ball <laughs> of gelatinous goo. Oh, God. And they were like, oh. uh, they're like, oh, fuck, mate. And then they're like, and then they have to break it down. And as they said, that they're like chopping into it. There's just wet wipes everywhere because like all that stuff just clogs oh. up and ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, the fat bird. Yeah, you're welcome. So Thank you. We have that. the most disgusting conversations on our pod. <laughs> I, this is just something that happened in real life that I read a news story about. I, I'm just saying the stuff that we like to talk about always ends up being disgusting one way or another. And now back to Six Picks Music Club. Okay, so yeah, the sun is starting to go down and the kids are trying to get in their last bit of fun before the day is over. And it's like we're never coming back or... You know, in fact, we will be tomorrow. So what are we going to listen to as we watch the sunset and uh, crack beer number five, Jeff? Yeah, so I'm I'm not with my kids, but in, in, in this version of things, but the sun's just gone down. 
and we we've had our chill day on the beach. We maybe had some sports beach. We maybe had some Budweiser beach. Uh, but now we are gonna smoke a one hitter at the right at the moment that the sun goes down because nighttime is upon us. And I don't want to hear Jack Johnson. I want to hear Best Coast's tune, California Nights. <laughs> Yeah, man, both of your tracks tonight are kind of that chill wave, uh, dream pop sort of aesthetic. But I think there's a case to be made that Chill Beach, especially after the last two songs, could be moving into Tripping Beach. Yeah, right? it could be. Or <laughs> Drug Beach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, dude, I don't know what it hey, is. Sweet. But... Is marijuana a drug? Should we do count that one? Yeah, you can smoke too much. You can smoke with too much marijuana on the beach and get way too fucking baked. Sure. You say smoketh too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shakespeare over here. Love it. Hey, come hither. Uh, so first off, I don't know if we've ever talked about it, but I'm a big dream pop guy. Like I, you know, yeah. pretty much my aesthetic is probably shoegaze and dream pop or like my, that's top two. That's the stuff that really drives you crazy. And there's some, I don't know if I'd say my top two, cause like Wilco and Ween don't fit into that, but you know what I mean? Like those are re- really yeah. get me going sometimes. And dude, this fucking song, this is again, best coast, Bethany Cosentino and Bob Bruno. They're just a duo. Beautiful picture on the cover of this. The album is California Nights of 2015. But it just drives me crazy. The song, I don't know, from the very first time I heard it, there's something about like the reverb on her vocals and the layering of all those yeah. guitars. It just like, oh my gosh. It takes me into Dream World right away. I'm like in a completely different place every time I listen to it. Love it. Yeah, I like that track a lot, man. The whole Best Coast scene was something that you might have introduced me to. It's funny because I was living in California (laughs) when this was coming out, and I wasn't familiar with it. Yeah, and I think there's something about Bethany Cosentino that is like your wife. Yeah. To me, I associate them. Like, they're the same kind of person. Like, they're tough feminists that don't put up with any shit and but they're also like confessional and and fun and nice and like open you know there's just something that's like they're the same person and (laughs) Uh, that's a really sweet thing for you to say she's gonna love hearing that (laughs) oh i yeah it's a compliment i actually one time emailed with her strangely enough it was after the after the Dave's wife, yeah, with Dave's wife. One time I emailed with her and it got real weird real fast. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, it was I'm just uh, gonna <laughs> log into her email real quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, send a little message to her from her, but as me, uh, yeah, anyway, she was seemed depressed and so she was like, I'll answer anybody's emails today, and I was like, Really? I like, yeah. I saw it on Twitter or something. And so I emailed her and she did email back remarkably. She must nice. have been on email all day long. Great song. Do you guys like that song? Great song. You guys dig that yeah. song? I actually did like that song. I did. I I wasn't sure when I first heard it if I was like, mm, is this going to be for me? But it's got a pretty good beat going through it, which is enough to get me interested. So cool. yeah, the intro, like when it, when it finally does kick into the, uh, the guitars, then it's like, oh yeah, this is a really cool fuzzed out rock song that yeah. isn't going to tear my face off. But like, yeah, I feel really good about listening to it. I think it's got a strong guitar solo in it too. It's not too long and it's just taking it, taking it there, taking you to the moon, yeah. you know, it's elevated. Sure. But yeah, it's, I like that long intro. Cause it, it like, cause I love the song so much. It builds up anticipation for me. I'm like, Oh yeah, I can't wait. Well, I mean, I think knowing the song, the intro is fine, but I feel like the first time hearing it, I'm like, is this going to be like, yeah, it's just a slow <laughs> kind of, yeah. Like and then I'm thinking like is this song going to be 12 minutes long? That's when it turns <laughs> Sorry. Like- she does she the way she sings. I was sometimes I've listened to the song a million times, but I was thinking about how she would have to sing that in on the track and live 
Cause she's go, she's drawing everything out like a ton. It's like, yeah, fading back and forth. Like she's got a really slow. It'd be hard to sing like that. Yeah, no, that's a great one. I think it's it's perfect for for beer number five. But uh, now the sun's down, and um, everyone's a little pinker than they were this morning. Cooler is officially lighter, and we're getting everything packed back up while we sip on the last cold one from the six pack. As we start to head back to where we're staying, dreaming about the crab claws and crawfish we're going to have for dinner. Shout out, Crazy Cajun. Gross. <laughs> we get to take a moment to reflect back on the day. We're just going to go dig in to crab claws with our fucking, like, sandy fingers just getting in there. Oh, I'm so hungry. I really wish that somebody would just prepare all this for well, me we'll and get, I didn't have to we'll dig it We'll get washed up. Everyone's going to take a shower first. Hey, man, we're crawfish family. We like it. We'll get in there. So our track, as we roll along, is one that was released in the summer of 1978. And uh, it might actually be the song that I was conceived to. So let's give it a listen. This is the Little River Band's song, Reminiscing. I mean, what a great song, right? Yeah, it's first a good listen. Song. What that's, do you think? That's gonna go in my. I have I have a yacht rock playlist, and that's not on it, but it will be now. I've never yeah. fucking heard yeah. that tune at all in my whole lifetime. Listening to that band, where do you think they're from? Mm, Missouri. They're from Australia. <laughs> what? They're one. Of, they're one of Australia's most successful bands. The song didn't actually perform well in Australia it uh but it reached number 3 on the US Billboard top hot 100s or whatever then the song won uh Australian record of the year at the 1978 King of Pop Awards and was actually one of John Lennon's favorite songs this is one where the the name of the band doesn't fit with what they are because yeah, the little river it. band sounds like the nitty gritty dirt band yeah, like a CCR thing, sure. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be like country rock hybrid, you know, Western swing or something. And instead, it's like yeah. fucking yacht rock. They're not a river band; they're a sea band. <laughs> there's rivers in Australia, right? Yeah, but there's also the ocean. They're an ocean band, not a river band. They got they mixed it up. I I love this as like an end of the day, like being thankful for what we've done and got to share together, you know, just really like having a reflective moment on, on, on and life. Reminiscing. And reminiscing. <laughs> I mean, this song's got everything. It's got violins. It's got a trumpet. It's got, uh, you know, chimes, dude, all I, kinds of stuff. I love There's that. So many textures. I love that groovy bass, dude. You know, I love that groovy bass. That yeah. Boom, 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 Big on the groovy boom, bass. Boom, 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 boom. boom. So this one became a heavy playlist during the COVID summers for us uh, because, you know, we didn't go anywhere. We spent all this time together. And um, one of the things that uh, we ended up doing was putting a stock tank pool in the backyard because pools were all closed. We couldn't swim. And it was just like, I've got these two girls that are like, I don't know, four and six years old. and, And like, what do we do with them? And so... Uh, and it was crazy. There was this phenomenon where everybody wanted to put a stock tank pool in their backyard. And, uh, and so they were sold out everywhere. I was like calling my aunt out in Midland and I was like, Hey, y'all are in the country. Like, do y'all have any stock tanks at the tractor supply country, tractor supply company out there? She was like, uh, no, I don't. I finally found one uh, down in Buda and I watched YouTube to figure out how to affix it with with uh, filter tubes and whatnot and intake and outtake valves and whatnot and then watertighted the whole thing. And then uh, so we have this little pool that runs on a filter and that we chlorinate and do all the all of the pool maintenance for. Yeah, it's become this sort of summertime tradition where we like we fill up the pool and and then we have this thing that's like, you know, when it's too damn hot in the Texas summer to like go outside during the day. But after the sun goes down, it's like, okay, cool. Let's turn on the radio. Let's play a playlist. Let's go listen to some tracks in the pool. Dude, when I visited you in California, we, we pool swam and steely danned that whole time. Yeah, no doubt. Awesome. No doubt. 
And then we went to watch Nine What's Inch up? Nails. That was <laughs> we were like swimming. We were swimming. They yeah. just had their first baby. We were swimming and and like, hey, nineteen and everything. Did you guys have your shirts on? No, no. this Fuck is no. not hmm. not wearing shirts. No, Dave was giving us the you know the greasy otter thing and the <laughs> with skin of hot dog and I was bringing like the <laughs> like the Sasquatch chest hair thing. He is correct. I don't grow any chest hair. That's true. <laughs> yeah, he just has skin of hot dog. No, dude, I I love the discordance of that. That we were just like like drinking beers and Steely Dan, and then it's just okay. Now let's go listen to Soundgarden and Nails. Terrible lie. You know. Anyway, so this is a this is a fun song for me for a lot of number of reasons. You know, all that time spent together going through adversity. I feel like that makes us a stronger family, and and so um, I got a got a special place in my heart for this song here. And damn it, guys! Now I want to go to the beach like right now. It's so awesome to swim in the ocean and feel like the salt water burning your eyes. And and thanks for coming coming with listener. Glad we got an extra towel. Come tell. Come tell. <laughs> and thanks for coming thanks, with listener thanks for coming I'm listener we... i'm glad we have an extra towel <laughs> is what you said <laughs> thanks for coming listener thanks for coming in my cattle trough pool <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the inbox is starting to get some love we got another email this one's from Haley, and she says Hey guys, love the show and wanted to see if you might shout out my friend's new album. It's called Soldier Mentality and it's really great. Well, yeah, Soldier Mentality. Okay, yeah, that's a great email. Thanks, Haley, for being a listener and uh, for the recommendation. I did give it a spin and I dug it and we'll close out today's show with one of the tracks. I think my favorite off of there is the Thank Me Later track, so we'll probably go with that one. And uh, for anyone else that's interested, it's the artist is Frontline Soldier. The album is Soldier Mentality. That's awesome. The whole time until you actually mentioned a record, I thought that was fake. <laughs> I was like waiting for the punchline. And I was like, where's this going? <laughs> oh, no, it's just real. Okay. <laughs> it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And so like with every show, there's going to be a link in the show notes to get you to that Spotify playlist where you can listen to all of today's songs in their entirety. Go check it out. Leave us a comment on the YouTube or email us at sixpixpod at gmail.com to let us know your favorite tracks for the beach trips. Like and subscribe, all that stuff too, if you haven't already. And that's going to do it today for us here at Six Picks Music Club. Our opening music is by the Shaolin Death Squad. Let's see if we can get them some extra listens this summer. Thanks to you, listener, for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next time. Until then, play it loud and keep jamming. This episode of Six Picks Music Club was produced by Bofady. Snarts. Wait, do it. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> Sorry. Bofady. Snarts. That one's hard to. <laughs> the... I I still haven't gotten the first one. I don't think. Bofady. Bofady. Snarts. Bofady. Snarts. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Bo- Edited <80s>. by Dick. <laughs> <laughs> What a fake name. Yo, my name is Bo Fady. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. Beach, please. Edited by Dick Fitzwell. <laughs> With special thanks to Dixie Rex. <laughs> Next time you step aside, go be